Welcome back to another episode. Ryan and Kevin here with Cast MMA. And today we have on MMA Junkie reporter John Morgan. John, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Getting ready for some big fights the next couple of weeks. So I'm pretty excited. March is looking good on the calendar, man. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how about so before we get into that, how about this weekend, man? Derek Lewis plus 300 underdog goes in there uh, and gets a nice knockout. What do you think about it? Yeah, man. Pretty impressive stuff. I mean, you know, to me, I thought Curtis Blades was the, the rightful favorite. You know what yeah. I mean? I just think the style, the way he is, uh, you know, it seemed like he was going to win that fight. He was my pick. But the odds were a little tough, man, to lay that kind of money on him because Derek Lewis is exactly that, right? He's the guy that can be losing every second of a fight and then land one shot and everything's over. So it's just yeah. as an underdog, man, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a fun maybe a little nerve wracking way to make some money. Cause you never know when he's going to turn it on, but man, that dude is, is legit capable of knocking out anybody in the heavyweight division. And uh, yeah. man, you, you, you got to give him some respect, right? You know, we all kind of joke around, you know, he's kind of the, the, the jokester, the prankster, the social mean guy, you know, but man, you gotta be honest, man, the, the, the guy is dangerous. So uh, man, he might, he might have a title shot coming up soon. Who knows? No. Yeah, now, now you were cage side for this. Now, what, what's your reaction when you just see him land that uppercut and then Blade just falls back? I was like, wow, what, what was your reaction? It's, I mean, obviously, when you see it in person, it's like, damn, yeah. you know, I mean, you really see the violence. But then it gets, to be honest, it gets, a, it gets a little bit uncomfortable because, you know, when you have the arena in, in a full crowd, like everybody's yeah. buzzing and there's all the cheers. And then, you know, after the cheers die down, people are just talking. So you literally feel that buzz in the air of everybody like, oh, my God. But in there, you know, like it's just quiet. And, and you know, obviously everybody is, you know, the announcers at first they're calling it and then, you know, they go to commercial and, you know, Blades is still kind of laid out there and everybody's just looking to make sure he's OK. And then he, you know, he starts coming to and he's basically like, like moaning in pain a little bit, man. It's it's, it's hard to watch. You know what I mean? It's, it's that reminder, though, man. It's that reminder of what this is. You know what I mean? It's a sport, um, but it's, it's one where people really are putting their health on the line, man. And you, you yeah. get reminded of that sometimes. So. Uh, it was both exciting and uh, and scary at the same time. Yeah, those follow up shots after he knocked him down, those two follow up shots were scary. Like those really could have messed him up two more. Yeah, they were. And it's it's a funny thing. You know, it's an interesting topic to debate. You know, I mean, I asked Derek about it afterwards, and he said, "Listen, I mean, it's nothing personal. It's just when I'm going, I'm supposed to go to the ref pulls me off." And he's right. I mean, you'd you'd maybe like to see him, you know, have a little bit more restraint, but. He's not doing anything wrong. That is exactly what they're told to do is to go until the ref pulls him off. And I think Herb Dean, if he was being honest, I mean, Herb was in there pretty quick, um, yeah. but he was a good four or five steps away. So I think, you know, he could have been positioned a little bit closer. I know that's tough against two big heavyweights, and you certainly don't want to be in the way. Um, but, man, you're talking about somebody that can put somebody's lights out that quick. Uh, you you got to be careful with it. So, you know, it, it, it's funny because on the one hand, you're right, man. The punches weren't necessary, and I kind of wish that he wouldn't land them. But at the same time, I don't fault Derek for doing it. He yeah, did exactly no. what you yeah. told to do, you know? Yeah. And now, what do you think's next for Derek? Because this is an interesting situation because you got Stipe Francis next month, but then John Jones, it looks like he's getting that next title shot, Dana's saying. So do you think potentially he gets the winner of this weekend's main event? I do. I think that's okay. what makes sense. You know, he called out Alistair Overeem. Yeah. We don't know if Alistair's going to fight again. And I got to be honest with you, man. If you're Alistair Overeem, I mean, you think about the history he's had. You know, th think about the fight with Jarzinho, yeah. right, where he's winning the whole fight and then gets caught mm -hmm. by one punch and it's over. So, like, you know, you kind of said you were ready to retire. Is this a fight that you want to have one more against? A guy that can, you know, you could be beating him the whole time and end up losing? I don't know, man. I kind of don't think that, that Alistair's really going to want that fight. So, for me – yeah, I think it makes all the sense in the world. Take the winner uh, of this week's main event okay. uh, between Rose and Strike and Gone and, and, and let them fight. And that's kind of like your number one contender fight right there. Yeah. So, you know, John Jones obviously gets the winner uh, of Stipe and Nagano. And, and it doesn't seem like anybody really has a problem with that. Um, you know, even, you know, Curtis before he lost was even saying, like, look, man, it's John Jones. Like, mm -hmm. what are you going to do, man? This is one of the, you know, one of the greatest of all time, if not the GOAT. So, of course, he gets a title shot. Um, so that yeah. just gives us another exciting matchup in, in, in the meantime. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so it's certainly going to be interesting to see how the heavyweight division plays out. But I want to go back to the Kamaru Usman and the Burns fight. I mean, uh, Kamaru looked great. What do you What are your whole thoughts about that fight in general? Yeah, it was great, man. I think I think he showed a couple of things. First of all, I think Usman showed that his striking is is improving. You know what I mean? Really throwing out the jab there and and, and having some success with that. But you know, also he got tested. He got tested early. You know, he got rocked early, and he was able to kind of show that he does have you know, heart, you know, kind of championship medal, if you will, um, and, and, and come yeah. back and win an exciting fight. And, uh, man, the, the, the emotion that was on display afterwards was pretty interesting. You know, yeah. at first he's elated, and then 
he kind of looks down to Gilbert Burns over there and, and, and man, he was, he was battling back tears in the middle of the cage, man. So, you know, I think he kind of let on like, Hey, I, you know, I kind of made it like, you know, I was upset and that these guys were, you know, uh, turning on me, but you know, still yeah. Gilbert's a good friend and we spent a lot of time together. So uh, I think <clears> it was a tough fight for him, but overall I think that was a great performance and man, I, I, I think Usman honestly is set up to, to, to be champion for quite some time, man. I mean, yeah. he's looking at some rematches, you know, it looks like the Masvidal one's on the table. That's exciting, right? I mean, we all want to see Masvidal fight, but you know, stylistically, I just think Usman's a nightmare for him. Um, you know, hopefully Colby Covington gets in there again. That was a great fight, but uh, man, I think I think Usman has everything it takes to be a dominant champion. Yeah, yeah I mean, you pretty much said it, but so yeah, the Usman called out Masvidal, and they're talking back and forth. Do you, do you believe in that fight, or do you think Usman should fight, say Colby or someone else in the division? I, yeah, to be honest with you, man, I'd, I'd rather see the Colby fight again. I mean, it was so good the first time around, and Colby went and and, and picked up another win. Um, mm -hmm. So, to be honest with you, man, I you know I, I'm not I'm not super excited about seeing the Masvidal fight again. If I'm just being 100 percent honest, I know that may sound yeah. terrible because I know what a star Masvidal is, and trust me, yeah. I'll appreciate the fight if it happens because our traffic will be through the roof. You know what I mean? He moves the mm -hmm. needle. It'll be a good thing for the sport. It'll be a good thing for Usman's paycheck. Uh, because he draws, he draws buys. But I, I just think that's a rough fight for for Masvidal. So yeah, to be honest with you, I like to see. I'll tell you what, to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Leon Edwards in there. I know that he's mm -hmm. been on the sidelines, but man, he's been on the sidelines through through kind of no real fault of his own. You know what I mean? I just yeah. feel like COVID kind of did him dirty. So I I, yeah. I kind of wish he could get that shot. Um, so I think honestly, I think I'd rather see both of those other than the Masvidal fight. But Masvidal's a star. If he fights, it ain't like I won't be tuned in. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be tuned in for that. But it's a crazy thing because this welterweight division, it's so complicated because Leon Edwards needed a new opponent last week. We thought Colby Covington was in the mix after Dana said that. He didn't want the fight. Now, do you think Colby made a mistake by not taking this Leon fight? Because Leon's ranked three. He's ranked one. Whoever wins that, obviously, the next number one contender. Do you think Colby made a mistake? I do. I do. And I like Colby Covington a lot, but I think he made a mistake. I think he should have taken that fight. That's the clear number one contender fight. I mean, I think if, if you win that fight, there's no doubt about it. And I understand that Covington felt like he was in the driver's seat. I, I thought maybe at the beginning he was just posturing a little bit, you know, just saying, oh, I don't know if I'm interested, you know, just to maybe call a little favor with the UFC. But, you know, the UFC will move on. And, and this is a time when, look, man, they, they need fights. They, they need fights. And there's, there's, the schedule is being filled all the time, and it's, it's busy, and COVID is causing problems. They need people to step up and fight. And I got to think behind closed doors, that probably didn't sit all that well with, with the UFC brass when they got to make decision. And, yeah. I mean, Colby, Colby, you know, some people don't like the guy very much. You know what I mean? So I don't know that he has that kind of fan power where it's like, well, we got to put Colby in now. You know, it'll just it, – it'll sell too many pay-per-views. So – um, I, I, you know, I think I understand why he made the decision he did, but I, yeah, I mean, listen, these guys got to manage their careers. You know, they only have so many opportunities and so many fights in them and they got to maximize their potential. And I get all that. Um, but yeah, I think that was the fight to make, man. I think that was the fight everybody wanted to see. And at that point, there's no argument, man. You beat Leon, you're back with your title shot. Now, I, I don't know that you just sit around and get a title shot. So I, I think it was a mistake. Yeah, and now we know he had, like, a rocky relationship with the UFC before UFC 245 against Usman. Like, you think that's going to affect anything, or you think him and Dana are, are good now and that's all behind them? I don't think it's anything personal. I don't think it's anything that can't be overcome, but this doesn't help. You know what I mean? They're, they, you, we've heard it all through this year, through the pandemic year. Dana's like, look, we need fights. If you don't want to fight, fine. We're moving on. We got stuff to do. Um, and I just think that, that, that Colby probably hurt his case a little bit here. Um, I don't think it's anything they can't move past. I mean, you know, you think about it, the week leading up to the Usman and Burns fight, uh, I mean, Dana was heaping praises on Colby, right? Just saying, oh, man, that Colby yeah. and, and, and Burns – or Usman fight, I should say, was one of my favorite fights ever, and it was amazing. And it was. It was a great fight. So, I don't know, man. I feel like Colby kind of ruined all that goodwill. So, um, you know, again, I, you know, he's got to make the decisions he feels right in his career. But I think in terms of guaranteeing yourself a shot back to the title, this was the way to do it and to pass on it. I don't know, man. Yeah, well, last thing here for Colby, like, what, what do you think's next for him? Because anytime, like, in the recent interview with Submission Radio, it seemed like the only two fights he won was that Usman rematch, the Masvidal fight, and those are both big fights. I would love to watch any of them. It doesn't seem like he wants Wonder Boy, Leon, any of those guys. What do you think? If you had to say, what do you think's next for Colby Covington? I think, you know, I mean, Wonder Boy, I think, would still be a fight to make, but as you said, he doesn't want any piece of it. Yeah. I think, to be honest, if the, if the masvidal Usman fight happens – um, I see Usman winning the fight again, if I'm just being honest with you. And 
I think you could still, even with Masvidal coming off a loss, I think you could put that together and it'd be a big fight. You know, Masvidal yeah. is a star, no question about it. And the heat between him and Covington and the history that they have, I, I think you could do that. So I, I just, I, I think that's probably the most likely scenario, which would be a big fight. Um, but I just, I just don't know that they're going to give him a title shot after he's elected to sit out, man. Yeah. And now speaking of Colby and everything, like, do you think that him and like, why do you think him and Masvidal is not happening? Because he beats Woodley. That's the fight to make. They hate each other. They used to be best friends living in the same apartment together. Why do you think that didn't happen? Because like that seemed like the fight to make. Dana said, I want that fight. Where do you think went on there? I think Masvidal and his team kind of knew that they had the upper hand in another title shot because of their star power. So I think what they did is kind of set back and waited to see what happened. And I kind of, I, it's not a bad plan. I mean, look, you say, hey, let's wait for the next title shot and let's see what happens. And sure enough, what happens? The champ comes out saying your name. Now, if you're already tied to a fight, that probably doesn't happen or you've got other commitments going on. But I think what they did is I think they were just kind of biding their time to be patient and see what happened. And I think it paid off. So, um, you know, I think that fight will happen at some point. It's too, it's too big of a fight not to. We need to see that fight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, John, are you, were you shocked when the UFC decided to match Leon Edwards with uh, Bilal Muhammad? I was a especially, especially after coming off a, a win at a UFC 258. No, it's going to yeah. be another fight. I was a little bit, to be honest with you. It wasn't, it wasn't a matchup that I was anticipating, that's for sure. But it's a matchup that makes sense, right? I mean, they're trying to get everything they can for Leon Edwards. I mean, look, this guy needs a paycheck as much as anything, man. He hasn't made mm -hmm. money in a year, man. The guy probably wants to get in there and, and, and get a fight. And, and he wants to win again to prove that he's deserving of a title shot. So, you know, it wasn't a matchup that I, that I anticipated, that's for sure. But it's yeah. one that I think makes sense. And um, it's a big opportunity for Bilal Muhammad, man, to fight somebody that high ranked up. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big opportunity for him to capitalize and stylistically, you know, stylistically, I think Bilal can be dangerous in this fight and you're getting Leon Edwards that who knows, might be a little, might be a little rusty, you know, hasn't yeah, competed really. in a long time. So it's big opportunity for Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah. And now does Leon get a title shot if he wins, you think like as Bilal Muhammad, he is ranked 13th, I think it is right now. So you think he gets that title shot if he wins? I do. I think, you know, the UFC, and Dana White, especially, you know, kind of tipped their hand and how they're feeling about it. You know, when Hamzat came out and uh, and Dana was like, look, man, Leon's he's taking every fight. He was willing to take this. You know, we got to get him up. And that, you know, that's when he was talking about putting the Covington fight together. You know, he's like, we got to go up the rankings, not down. I think that was a little, you know, a little look into their psychology and how they feel about um, about Leon Edwards. And I think they know. Um, that he's a good fighter, number one, that he's been willing. You know, he, he of course, he had some opportunities, too, where he could have fought and he didn't. But, I mean, it's – come on, man. The things that the guy's been through and what he's had to deal with, it's, it's completely understandable. Um, and I think the UFC wants to reward him for that. So, uh, yeah, he wins here, even though you might say, well, I mean, why does a Bilal Muhammad, you know, victory get you a title shot? I think it's not about that victory. It's just about the whole situation in, in its entirety. Definitely. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to that fight in a couple of weeks. So uh, let's end this interview and some predictions. So Ultimate Fighter keeps getting talked about, and you see the potential matchups they have, uh, like Masvidal Usman, Colby Usman, Colby Masvidal. You hear all these names getting uh, thrown around. Who do you think the coaches will end up being, and who do you want the coaches to be? I'll tell you who I really want. I wanted Covington and Masvidal. That's who I really wanted. I thought yeah. I, I, I thought that was going to be uh, amazing. But you know what? I, I still think that um, – I could be wrong, but I, I still think this this uh, Usman-Masvidal kind of pairing ends up being the coaches. We'll see. You know, yeah. a lot of it's going to deal with the calendar. But uh, I, I think that, that Usman, you know, I talked to him the other day, and he seemed like he's pretty motivated to make it happen. And, of course, the UFC and ESPN would love to have Masvidal in there with his star power. So – um, I think they're going to find a way to make that happen. It's going to be interesting to see how that all unfolds, man. Yeah. Well, we can't wait for the return of Ultimate Fighter. And uh, if you guys want to go follow John on social media, at John Morgan MMA, and on Twitter, it's MMA Junkie John. And, John, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was really good to talk to you. It's and, always a pleasure, guys. Any last words? The floor is yours, man. Nah, man, you know, just listen, it's going to be a good month. Like you said, you know, follow us at MMA Junkie, hit up the social media. Uh, man, it's it looks like March. Like I said, a ton of title fights, a couple of pay-per-views. And then look, man, Bellator is going to get start going in April again. You got PFL coming back as well. Yeah. So 
man, it's about to be a really exciting time to be an MMA fan. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. March is going to be a great month. We cannot wait for that one. So many good fights. Yeah. One of good fights. Well, no it was really great speaking with you, John. And thank, thank you so much for coming on again. And speak soon.